All right. Hello, everyone. Um, this is our demonstration, our little Facebook Live for our dunk bags. My name is Jennifer Itkinen, and I'm a member support specialist at Girl Scouts, Minnesota and Wisconsin, Lakes and Pines. And this is um, Annika, and I'm a Girl Scout senior. Yeah, so thank you for joining us today. Um, <clears throat> if you could, uh, while we're waiting for everybody um, to get a chance to log in, if you could uh, note in the comments where you're from, and then if you're a part of a troop, what troop number? And we'll get started in a little bit. So, Annika, <laughs> what is your favorite thing to do at camp? Uh, my favorite thing to do at camp is swim. <laughs> swim? Yeah. I think that's my favorite activity, too, is swimming in those water activities. Um, looks like um, we have some people logging in. We'll just wait just a few more seconds just to um, give everybody a chance that wants to view it from the beginning. Um, if you do uh, miss one of our videos, <laughs> if you do miss one of our videos, we do uh, post them on our um, YouTube page as well. So you can always uh, catch them there along with on Facebook. So uh, it's two minutes in, so we will get started. So tonight we are going to do um, dunk bags or sterilization bags. Um, this is one that Annika made at one of our, um, leader retreats that also had a, um, program aid, um, session with it. Um, this one is just made out of a washcloth. And so this is what we'll be making tonight. So the supplies that you need or that can be substituted. So we have washcloths. Um, when I was out getting some needed food, I also swung by um, the section uh, with the kitchen section and got some, just some value pack, the cheaper kind of um, washcloths. This was a 24 pack and it was $5. So that was a good value. So you could make um, 12 dunk bags out of this. If you don't have um, kitchen uh, uh, dish rags or this type, I like this type, the cheaper ones, also called dry weave, because it's rather thin. Um, so it's easy to push um, any of those blunt tip uh, needles through. Um, and it also dries very quickly, but you could use some other materials if you don't have uh, dish rags is you could use mesh netting. You could use also just a cotton dish rag if you have it or a cotton towel that you could uh, cut and use. You could use a terry cloth dish rag or dish towel. If you do use a dish towel, though, um, be sure to fold it in half, and then you'll only sew on two sides instead of the three sides that we're going to be doing tonight. Um, this type, it's a microfiber type uh, dish rag. I do not recommend using this type because you, um, it's designed to absorb water and we want our dishes to be dry for the next time that we're going to be using them when we're out cooking outside. So this is the only kind, but any other type dishcloth, dish rag you have would work. We will also be using um, some cotton thread, cotton string. Um, 
this kind I had gotten off of Amazon. It's um, meant to tie up roasts and chickens in the oven. <laughs> um, but um, you can use any type of um, string thread that you have. If you have embroidery floss, that would work as well. And um, I do have shoelaces to be used as well. Um, if you don't have shoelace, you can use your string. So the other thing we'll be using is some large blunt needles. They do uh, come in plastic, mine are metal. Let's see if I can kind of show where it has that um, large opening to thread your string, cotton, um, yarn, that sort of whatever fiber you're going to be using. All right, so we will get started. So for Annika, and I'm going to tip the camera down just like we did last week with our edible campfire um, and kind of tip it back and forth so you can kind of see. So to get started, I'm going to give Annika two dish rags and And then she's laying them right on top of each other. Okay. And then next we're going to get our string ready. So here we have a string. I would say you would use about um, three feet. Um, how I do it myself is I take the string and then I reach out. You can kind of see my hands <laughs> back here and about an adult arm length or two arm lengths, I suppose. That's my estimation of about three feet. If you do run out of string, you can always tie another piece on to it as you're working through. But so there you go, Annika. So she is going to tie a knot in one end. And then she's going to thread the needle. If your needle does get a little, um, or the end of your string gets a little ratty, um, where the fibers are pulling apart, you can always cut it again or um, moisten it to get it through. That looks like she got it through on the first try. Good job. <laughs> All right. Now, there are two types of stitches you could use. Actually, more than two, but... Um, the easiest one, and especially if you're working with uh, kids, um, and I hope you'll be able to see this okay, is to do what's called a running stitch. And I just kind of call a running stitch the up and down stitch. So you pull your thread through and pull it up. And then that's where you go down. And then you're going to poke it through and go up. And then inch and a half out. You're going to go down. Inch and a half up. So it's that running stitch or up and down. You could also, if you are more, um, if you're used to sewing, if you've had experience sewing or embroidering you could use a running stitch or a, excuse me a whip stitch where you just kind of go on the outside when you do your stitches on your dunk bags you do try to want to stay as close to the edge as you can so that's the running stitch so um, I will have Annika 
start on hers. So for ours with the washcloth, you're going to want to continue on sewing three sides. So there's our first side. We run around, went around second side, went around third side. So only sew three sides together. We'll leave this portion up at the top for last to do the drawstring. So while she is doing her stitches, just um, to go over a little bit about dunk bags and their uses. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> um, uh, dishes are carried to camp, I recommend, um, or if you are going to troop camp, um, to have each girl have a dunk bag to carry their own dishes to camp in. Um, and they are hung on a clothesline until mealtime. Do you kind of have a little picture here? Um, they serve as an outdoor cupboard to keep your dishes clean. It allows for sterilization of eating utensils after meals. So some uh, do's and don'ts with dunk bags. Um, dunk bags are meant to be kept clean. So never drag or let it fall to the ground. When it's time to eat, remove the dishes and rehang up until it's ready for use. Do not use it for a placemat a sit-upon, or a dish ray. Uh, never put dirty dishes in it, only clean ones. Never wipe your face, hands, or table on anything else with it. Even though it's tempting, it's there. Don't wipe your face with it. Don't use it. It would be a pretty placemat, but don't use it as that placemat. So, Annika, how are you doing? Good. Good. See, you're working on it. Okay. And then <laughs> we are going to do a little low tech magic. So, <laughs> look at Annika's done. <laughs> so, for those of you at home, um, if you are sewing along with us, um, just keep sewing, watch, and you can always rewind the video later um, if you need to. But so look at woohoo! <laughs> We've got all three of our edges. So one, two, three that are sewn. Okay. So when you get to the end, okay, you're just going to tie a little knot. A little knot at the end and Annika can you cut off we're gonna leave just a little bit of a tail but have her cut the longer part of that off okay so now we have this nice open okay now we are going to use our shoestring okay and that hard part of the lace with the dry weave washcloth, it does poke through really easy, or rather easy, maybe not really easy, but it does poke through. So um, if you are using your thread, you can use that too if you don't have a shoestring. Um, I like the shoestrings just because um, when you have younger girls at camp, um, with little hands, it's easier to hold on to the shoestring for them to dunk their dishes in rather than a smaller thread. But you could use thread as well. All right, Annika. So to make the cinch, I'm going to have her poke through both pieces of the dish rag. And it takes just some wiggling, a little bit of wiggling. 
Okay, so we're going to pull it about halfway. Wouldn't you say about halfway? Okay. <laughs> okay, yep. So it's poked, poked through here, both. And we've got a nice um, even, the two ends are even. We're going to now take one, just one end of the shoelace and do that up and down stitch or that running stitch. Poke it through just one washcloth, dishcloth, wash rag. <laughs> okay. And do that up and down movement stitch. And I'll have Annika continue. Now, I like the, the handmade um, dunk bags over the store-bought ones. Uh, just because it's something fun that you can do with your troop or your family. Um, and now she's going to flip it over and do that running stitch on the other side through just one washcloth. Um, I like doing these handmade ones because it, um, one is a memorable experience, like I was saying, something fun to do, something memorable, and it also provides some life skills. So a little bit of sewing, a little bit of introduction to sewing for young children, for girls, if they've never had that experience and speaking of sewing our program uh, specialist um, andrea did a how to sew on a button video if you haven't caught that you can check it out on facebook or on our youtube kind of fits in with the um handmade uh dunk bags so now monica has them all the cinch the, the shoelaces. So now we're going to take the two ends and then just put a little knot on the end. Twist them around. Pull through. Little knot. Okay. There we go. So now you can cinch your dunk bag and I love my props <laughs> Annika shaking her head she knows mom loves props when teaching so woo, we've got our dishes so Annika mm -hmm. <laughs> here are our pretend camping dishes so we're going to put our silverware in and um, that's one of the reasons why it's important for your stitches to be a little closer together is so that your silverware doesn't poke through or fall out. But we are going to put our silverware in. And we are going to put our plate in. And put our bowl in. Okay, and our cup. Now, when you do bowls and cups, you want to make sure that it's tipped down. So when you dunk that dunk bag in the sterilization water, you don't, you aren't left with a whole cup full of that. You want it to drain out. So put that cup in down, cinch it up, and then we're all ready. <laughs> So thank you for joining us. Um, if you do have any questions, um, I'll take a quick peek at the comments. Looks like, ooh, we've got some. Um, what size is the shoelace? Great question. 
Um, I got the 45 inches is the shoelace. Um, but again, you can make it longer or shorter if you're using uh, the thread. Let me see. If there's any other questions here. Okay. Nope, I don't see any other questions. Um, if you do are watching this video later, you can always leave a comment and we'll get back to you. Um, I am so glad that you joined us tonight or you're watching this video later. Uh, it's been a lot of fun doing these Facebook Live, especially with uh, my daughter. And uh, next week we are going to be doing a sit upon tutorial and different ways you can make sit upons with different materials. So, um, thank you again and hope you have a good night. And when you're done, you're all set for your dunk bag sterilization when you go keeping, hopefully, this summer. <laughs> Thanks again. Good night. <laughs>